you're new in town or just new to this whole podcast thing, you're tuning in to Law by Night, the podcast that discusses all things vampiric with no fear of breaching the masquerade. In this episode, we shall review The Guide to the Sabbat, a source book for Vampire the Masquerade. I shall present my thoughts and opinions on its presentation and mechanics to help you better decide whether this is the source book for you. Just over a year ago at the time of recording, we had a look at the Camarilla and Anarch books of Vampire the Masquerade 5th edition. Those who have listened to episodes 86 and 87 of the Law by Night podcast will know that I felt that both books did not live up to their full potential. What was provided was useful if rather fleeting and vague, ultimately serving as interesting coffee table books. Whilst they were flawed and disappointing tomes, at least they provided some small and minor elements for both storytellers and players. Sabat the Black Hand was, in my opinion, a disorganised, contradictory mess from start to finish that failed to progress the sword of Cain in any meaningful manner beyond the boring bite-stab-kill-slurp stereotype, as I explored in fuller detail in my review of that book at the tail end of March 2022, which was a few months ago as of the recording of this episode. Those, however, are not the only source books for those three sects, as you may have gathered by the title of this episode. Three books were released for the revised edition of Vampire the Masquerade. The second of these, Guide to the Sabbat, was released in March 1999 and was the first in-depth guide to the Sabbat, claiming to be the definitive guide for the Sabbat. It provides purposes, goals, history, secrets, and organization, as seen through the eyes of its members and enemies. It also claims to cover the more advanced powers and specific skills of the clans that make up its members. Now, all of these are pretty big claims, so someone has to test that statement, and that person just so happens to be me. Do these claims hold up, and can and should new players and storytellers for newer installments of Vampire the Masquerade use this for their sessions? But before we dive into the book review proper, here are the rules to the Law by Night book reviews. I will explore snippets of the lore, mechanics and rules found within the tomb. I will look as to how they are presented and easily they are conveyed to new and old players alike. As this is a review written and presented by me, all thoughts and opinions are my own, so if you disagree with something I have said, that is totally fine. It does not mean that you are right and I am wrong and vice versa. A good place to start, if anything, is at the beginning, which has a start for the physical book itself, which currently sits neatly upon my lap. It is a letter-sized hardback book with the infamous green marble pattern like practically every Vampire the Masquerade core book before then and everything else in the V20 line after it. It is made of a slightly squishy hardback material, presumably some sort of cardboard perhaps, that is somewhat harder than its vanilla counterpart, but it's a tome that will mark easily all the same. Being a source book, it is also much smaller than any accompanying core book. On the front cover is a Sabat pack crashing the gothic church scene described in my review in the Guide of the Camarilla book, which is not a speculation on my part, as the Guide to the Sabat does confirm it is indeed the same scene by looking at page 200. What we have here on the cover of tonight's guide is the meat sea in their Zulu form, followed by Teeth McGee, which is what I'm calling the large Vost, causing most of the carnage. In front of them is what I assume is a Toreador anti tribu enjoying herself a bit too much in the flame and a big bearded vampire. I am assuming this is a Kaitiv, as I have noticed in the last couple of books that if it looks like a trucker and has a messy unkept beard, it is a Kaitiv. Those two look a little out of place, just posing by the flames, but it makes a good photo op, I suppose. This sits on top of the infamous green marble that is Vampire the Masquerade, with a clearly scanned in version of the blurb straight onto the back, with the ye old Sabat Ankh in the centre, which is stylized as if it is part of the green marble. The front cover itself is not centred, going a bit too far over to the right, which is something that irritates me greatly. I will mention at this point that, like most of my TTRPG purposes, my copy of Guide to the Sabbat came from Drive-Thru RPG, so whilst the printing of my copy was clear, yours may differ. To that end, the art found within the book varies in style and clarity. To portraits that could belong in any Wraith the Oblivion book, a couple of Werewolf the Apocalypse styled shots and busy grayscale scenes that dominate the start of each chapter, almost giving off a nostalgic vibe. 
Most of the book, however, is dominated by intense and aggressive sketches which really shines well here. I'm particularly fond of the drawings of the anti-tribute clans and bloodlines found in this book, each one incredibly striking and menacing and thus inspires me to play one of these clans. Yes, even the Ventru. My favourites in this are the Gangrel, Ravnos, Salubri, Ventru as already stated and the Bruhar anti-tribute drawings, with that particular one being the most insane, perhaps almost too insane, as that Bruhar looks like something that Mad Max rejected, fit with a pocket knife arm of all things, which is by no means a bad thing. The only portraits I'm not fond here are the Blood Brothers, Malkavian anti-tribute and Serpents of the Light, which as a reminder are a type of Setite anti-tribute. That said, I will jump the gun here for a moment and say that that particular bloodline has one of the more interesting write-ups in that section of the book. But let's go back to the beginning of the book. When you open the book and read the short story, you are greeted with the first chapter of the book, which I found a little jarring as I had grown accustomed to the friendly introductions to various books and themes and topics. Perhaps this was an intentional design choice for the developers, breaking expectations of this society of sourcebook reading, or most likely it was an oversight or omitted entirely for different reasons. But I digress. Chapter 1 is a fairly lengthy first chapter that looks at a stereotypical view of the Sabbat from within in the sect, as well as the Sword of Cain's views on others from both the perspective of the younger and elder Sabbat Cainites, which I think is a very interesting narrative choice. The elders hate the supernaturals of the world of darkness for being loud and noisy inconveniences or slaves to their betters, whilst the younger hate all the other supernaturals under the Camarilla but don't have any reasoning why, which subtly informs the reader that the fledglings of the Sabbat are being inducted into some mad war cult ran by near emotional as monsters, which is exactly what the Sabbat is in a nutshell. Now if you worked this out after reading this section in the book, congratulations! You now have a better chance at playing a good Sabbat character that isn't just a blood crazed murder hobo 24-7. The chapter also talks about the history of the Sparta and the Anarch Revolt, starting from the point in the World of Darkness history where the destruction and diabli of the Lysombra and Semnitzi antediluvians occurred. This is where they, the Sabbat, determine the beginning of the Anarch Revolt. Those that listened to previous book reviews and listened to the Law by Night podcast would know differently and better. There is discussion about the Convention of Forms, which is laid out in full, similar to the Guide to the Anarchs book which I commented on also and split that caused, forming the free sects and changing the world of vampire forevermore. From there, the formation of the sect and how it blossomed through its various civil wars is discussed in great detail, including the organisation of the Sabbat fit with a table of the titles and various nicknames and descriptors of said titles so you know how to address them correctly, the formation of the Code of Molan, the invasion of the Americas, a brief description of the clans and bloodlines and why there are no Trimir anti-tribute in the Sword of Cain. There is also information on how they, the Sabbat, view the old clan Zemitsi and La Sombra. But wait, there's even more! There is also an extensive list of the various factions in the Sabbat, such as the Sabbat Inquisition and the Black Hand, an overview of creation rights and how they deal with havens, sect games and justice, in lots of mostly biased detail, which gives plenty of wriggle room for the intuitive reader to come with their own conclusions at the propaganda presented to them, which is something I have always enjoyed doing, hence the existence of this podcast. The chapter ends with a handy lexicon of current, as of 1999, vulgar and old form phrases slash slain you may hear in the Sabbat. I personally didn't know that the name The Sword of Cain was considered old form, for example. Chapter 2 expands more on the clans and bloodlines of the Sabbat in traditional ye old character creation format you have seen time and time again. That is, assuming you are an older fan of course and you are familiar with the double prayed spread format. Deep thorough information is provided about their organisation, strength and influence within the Sabbat, as well as the clan's practices which include their in-clan cultures and who and what they embrace. I will mention that there are some differences of the clan weaknesses, most notably the Asamite anti-tribu not having to worry about the Tremere blood curse placed upon them, though most of the differences are social ones, like the Bruja not being so ashamed of their passionate outbursts and the bestial marks of the Gangrel are encouraged. It also makes the point that the Blood Brothers and Harbingers of Skulls are not to be treated as player characters for their own lore reasons. 
I do find the latter more interesting, given their developments in V20 and just my general love for the Cappadocian slash Harbingers of Skulls in general. Their alliance with the Sabat is one of shared hatred for the Camarilla, not the Antediluvians and their politics. It is also a relationship based on fear and convenience. The Harbingers that appeared from the Shadowlands were not neonates, but elders. They have the knowledge and power many of the Sabat don't, and all the Lazarines are interested in revised edition is the Giovanni. Beyond this, anyone familiar with the deep lore of each of the clans won't learn too much here, but this section is useful if they need a brief summary and want to know how that blends into the Sabbat. Chapter 3 is all about character creation, which is a chapter I don't feel need to go through too much given the extensive character creation and how two guides I have done. Contrary to the vast majority of Sabat tales I hear online, this chapter really emphasises how younger members, the neonates and fledglings, would still have some humanity and very few of the Sabat are deranged monsters. Older players would recognise the older distribution of points and how the Sabat have slightly different distribution spreads that would find its way into V20, as do the many archetypes. Similar comments can be said regarding backgrounds though, they just go into existing ones and how the Sabat would use them which provides some lovely flavour and new ways of approaching a task is rather yummy indeed. What is new and unique to this book are some abilities unique to the Sabat. One example is Vamp, which is essentially whoring yourself out with your body. Seems a fairly normal practice for most Toydor players, right? But the Sabat are not so connected to their emotions to think and operate like that. Those on paths of enlightenment and slash all the lower rankings of the path of humanity can't go through those emotional motions. The fourth chapter carries on with the character creation stuff, talking and expanding upon disciplines such as dark formaturgy and vicissitude. Sanguinus and Valorin were considered newer disciplines at the time, including a new at the time necromancy path. If you have V20 and Rite of the Blood, you have these disciplines also, so this has become quite the redundant chapter for the vast majority of Vampire the Masquerade players. Following this is another beefy chapter that looks a bit more of the cultic and occultic nature of the Sabat, starting with some paths of enlightenment, which are clearly detailed and easy enough to understand for someone to play with one, but not so accessible that their themes are diluted down and remain monstrous and appropriately alien, allowing the players and storytellers to come up with their own interpretation with their characters. I will say that the descriptions and information provided on each of these and more are better explored in the book Chaining the Beast, which I reviewed in a previous episode of the podcast. There is also a large section of the various Rite, which I cannot stress enough how vitally important it is for anyone remotely curious about the Sabat to understand that these are the things that gel the sect together. Not only the write-ups of the various Rite are fantastic, you are also presented with plenty of ideas to adapt and alter them to make your pact a bit more unique. They are not huge changes, just little things that make big differences. The to ends with derangements to inflict characters with, probably the Malkavians as that is their inherent clan weakness here. I have never been fond of this mechanic in old auditions of Vampire, given all of them are poorly written and gamifying mental illness, fictional or otherwise, is incredibly ableist. Chapter 6 is the Storyteller's Chapter, and it is probably my favourite chapter in the book, as is often the case with many of my book reviews. It addresses that you have to be more mature than those playing the Camarilla. Now that might come as a shocker to folks who have only ever played V5, but it is indeed very possible to play as the Sabat. It is fun to blow things up and to be violent antagonists, <clears throat> sorry, inhumane, but there is more to that, that it is possible to indulge in your inner monster and explore what happens when your humanity plummets at 70 miles per hour. There are actual themes, concepts and ideas galore for the storyteller to can actually use of their players, taking all the ideas presented in the book thus far and amplifying it tenfold, whether it be political, occultic and exhilarating dangerous, like chasing a werewolf. The next and final chapter is perhaps one of the most helpful and vital chapters to any storyteller's arsenal, which is a chapter on how to build your city. Whether it is an actual city that you and your players live in, or a fictional city, chapter 7 goes through all the things you would find and probably include in your setting in some capacity or another. This is not as simple and formulaic like the similar chapter in Guides to the Camarilla, only because the Sabat do not operate at infinite 
influence the mortals the same way the Camarilla do. Rather with secrecy and over manipulation, the Sabat hide in chaos and spread fear as they go, breaking the established foundation within the plenty of discipline usages that break people's will if need be. But that's not all, for there is one appendix left to explore. It's simply titled Allies, Antagonists and Others, and it is filled with, well, you guessed it, allies, antagonists and others. It is essentially a huge pool of nameless NPCs fulfilling every position of power in the Sabbat, plus some additional ones that you can discover for yourself. It's great to call upon one of these examples if your players do something totally unexpected and you weren't prepared for it, you're a brand new storyteller and are feeling unfamiliar and how about going balancing stats for your characters, something that is some of the more recent V5 books do dreadfully, or if you're an experienced ST and just don't have the time or energy to stat your NPCs. It works great for running one shots and convention games. Finally, the usage of ghouls and those infamous revenant families of the Samitsi, as well as some interesting war ghoul ideas to throw at your players. LA by Night fans will recognise the Warhound. I am aware I have skimmed over a lot of specifics for this book, for good reason. It's a chunky book with a lot of dark subject matters. The Sabata vampires, yes, but they are vampires pretending to be mortals. They wouldn't want you to admit that, but it's true. They are a war cult with a dangerous sense of spirituality that hunts werewolves for fun. The Sabata are simply not psychotics that walk the world of darkness. That it is possible for a storyteller to run a very satisfying Sabat story if they are prepared to retain themselves that the Sabat are not just bored, disorganized shuffleheads. And I know some newer V5 players are scared of the green marble and the misinformation that older slash legacy stuff encourages power gaming, but that is not true. The Sabbat that you have a mild interest in are derived from things explained in this book. If any ST and player is serious about exploring the Sabbat, the Guide to the Sabbat is a must-have book. It is the most informative and useful of any Sabbat book out there, one that makes sense from start to finish, which shouldn't be a legitimate praise, but given the last Sabbat books reviewed on the Law by Night podcast, you would be forgiven to think it's all contradictory transphobic fluff. But besides said petty stamps of the V5 Sabbat book and that particular homebrew, Guide to the Sabbat is an essential tome that any VTM fan should have, even if they can't get their head wrapped around the Sabbat, because this book will make everything much clearer and exciting for you. Anything you've heard about the Sabbat probably originates from this fantastic source book, so why continue to gossip about them online and dive into the deep end and get the information from the source? If you have been listening to the podcast in order, you will know that I've now reviewed all three guides and might be curious how I'd rank them in preference. They are Camarilla, Sabat, and Anarch. And for those of you who are new to the Law by Night brand and the reviews I occasionally do, I do not do out of 10 scores because they are subjectively pointless. One person's 10 out of 10 is another's 3 out of 5 stars, which is another's minus 42 out of 100, so I should rate this book 1k night per 50,000 mortals out of 10, as that is just as helpful as a proper out of 10 score. To be kept updated, follow the Law by Night VTM Twitter and Instagram pages to find out when we will upload each episode. You can also find out by subscribing to the YouTube channel and clicking on the little bell, as you'll be immediately notified when the latest episode is live. Until next time, farewell.